For everyone, it's a different story, a different reason for doing whatever it is we do. However, it seems like we all have something flawed about us that holds us back from living our lives the way we want to. There's somebody I met who refuses to use this excuse to take the easy way out. His name is Max. Max McGee. And, well, you'll just have to take the next few minutes to get to know him. Uh, well, I'm the early riser, so I get up first and alert Dad that we need to be moving. Max gets the bus by about 6.40, and he loves riding the bus. Much prefers that over being taken to school. And I think he also likes that he gets to school earlier. Yeah. Some more of his friends are there. Um, he loves PE with Coach Silvertooth and Coach Barry. He loves art with Chris, and he mainly loves his friends, but he likes Tank and Schultz a lot. So. He does Special Olympics, which is through Paraland ISD. It's not just Dawson specific, but he does all the sports, which is swimming, and they do that at the auditorium, and then bowling, Paraland Bowling Alley, basketball, which is his sport, it's pretty good. And I'm a Jayhawk, so I'm pretty excited about that. And then uh, track, so they do track at school, actually Tank is the, um, Carrie Tankersley is his actual name, is the coach for that sport. I think working with children like Max and all the other life skills students, is it really makes your job a joy to do. You know, you're helping them work in the community, be better people in the community, be able to understand living in the community, but they also make you a better person. You see, see their joy for life, you see how they interact with others, and that they love just being around other people. It doesn't matter the disability, they don't see disability, they don't see what's wrong with a person, they only see the person as a whole. And I think seeing him interact and being able to teach children like Max become a, a product of, or a, of in the community is exactly what I want to do for the rest of my life. And I've enjoyed the last few years, and I've been doing this for 15 years now, but working with children like Max makes it a true joy to do every day. Okay. I'm helping you way over here. So we, we, me and Max spend a lot of time together, and just so it, he teaches me things that I that I learn a lot from him, and I teach him a lot of things that even though he's 17 at his age, and when he got there, once he get more of age, he'll be 18 pretty soon. So it's it's good to teach him more things about life, you know, once he get out there on his own, you know, that's a good standard for him. He um, has always been a bit of a ham, so he is involved in a group called the Dionysus Theater, and they have recitals a couple times a year, and so um, he gets to do productions a couple times a year and has loved doing that, and gets to sing and dance. Now Max has an expansive support system already, but I have yet to mention one important detail. Max is one of three triplets. He's about six mm -hmm. weeks old, so they were. he's one of a set of triplets, as you know. So they were born uh, 11 weeks early. So he was two pounds and 12 ounces at birth. 14. Actually. Or 14, he was 14. <laughs> Emma was 212, Ben was 3-1. Emma was 2-1. Oh, that's so large. Oh, that's so large. He must have seen Emma at lunchtime. Cool. I don't see Ben too. He see Ben sometimes. So, so being around like the same age and stuff, the one good thing is that, well I guess one of the good things is, is that you have all like usually the same friend groups and stuff. And so all of our friend groups really are like, we just hang out with each other and like they accept Max as like one of like the dudes and stuff. So yeah, so like having like the same friend groups and stuff that like understand like all of us like is pretty cool. I think another thing that's really cool is we're, is because we're all around the same age, we're all dealing with kind of the same issues. Yeah, just, um, especially that. Both um, kind of socially and we're all growing up, so like our parents kind of, 
Granted, it was difficult because they had to figure it all out at once, but at the same time, once they had something figured out, they never really had to worry about it too much because if they had it covered, they're good because all three of us are going through mostly the same things. Mm -hmm. I think patience is a big thing because um, he doesn't always understand things the same. He doesn't get that social correctness about things. And so... And some so advantages good... that are of that same unfilteredness is he really teaches you to be, um, kind of express what you're feeling. So if he, mm -hmm. you know, if he really likes you, then he might just hug you. <laughs> yeah, the real factor. I think being real about things is something that you learn from people with disabilities a lot. And it, now I feel like I've become much more comfortable in their world than in other places. And I appreciate that greatly, that there's that real factor that they just don't be around the bush and you get what's right there. So that's a really wonderful thing. And so he deserves good things. Ain't that right? <laughs> <laughs> Going into the process of making this documentary, we expected to meet a family who was dealing with the hardships of having a son with Downs. We expected to hear stories about how hard it's been, but we couldn't have been more wrong. The McGee's by far are the most optimistic, strong, and tightly wound family I've ever met. Max's support system is incredible, and he has everything he needs and more to be successful and happy in his amazing life. Max taught us to live the way we want to live regardless of the way people see us. In the end, it's your life no matter what your challenges are. Your life is up to you.